This current news brief is brought to you by City Auto Plaza. Make City Auto Plaza your first stop and give us the opportunity to earn your business. City Auto Plaza, your hometown dealer. Our next request comes from Johnny Herndon regarding the police department. Uh, good evening, Johnny Herndon here, 2080 Cedar Avenue, Canyon City, which is a mailing address. Um, technically, it's Brookside if you wanted a physical address. Um, in any case, um, I had a firearm stolen uh, from a, a different place where my son was living uh, some months ago. Over 60 days ago, I filed a report with the Canyon City Police and a police officer slash detective did receive a report uh, verbally at that time and then a written one from my son uh, the following day. Uh, in probably closer to 90 days now, I've never gotten a response from that detective as to what the heck they're doing. Interestingly, at the time of the report, we indicated where the stolen firearm was, which was a pawn shop up on uh, well, 159 Elm, Elm Avenue. Um, one apparently notorious for receiving stolen goods, but that's another story. Um, I indicated who the perpetrator who stole the firearm was, and I also indicated where that person was located currently, which was the county lockup in Pueblo. So I basically handed the detective his case uh, and said, basically, go get my gun back. Um, that detective uh, called us back that one time, just the following day, and indicated that um, the written report written by my son, because it was in his possession when it was stolen, uh, seemed to have some holes and some inconsistencies. He wanted to discuss this with him, so they took him, uh, or met with him down at the CERT office on South 9th, and essentially told my son, uh, gee, what are you hanging around with people like that for that might steal your gun? Uh, how do I know that you didn't have other arrangements and sell it to him? Uh, so he basically scolded my son for uh, having some association with the perpetrator, which in this case he did not. Uh, he simply lived in a, in a rented house and that perpetrator had some access to that because of being related to somebody else who lived there. So we got a scolding, uh, a talking down to, and no further results from that police officer in what's looking like at least 90 days now. Um, when um, the chief of police came to a tea party meeting, uh, after the meeting, discreetly I brought this up to him and I said, sir, um, here's what's going on with my deal. Um, and he had indicated that certain officers were pretty much uh, bums, my word, that didn't work real hard and that they shoveled stuff aside quite a lot. So I said, well, just for my benefit, here's the name of the officer who's handling my case. Uh, would you qualify him as being a go-getter or something else? And he said, well, I'm afraid I'd have to tell you that it's something else. If you want any results at all, you're going to have to call this man and hound him very frequently. Like he said, call him every day or whatever, because the squeaky wheel will get the grease. And I said, well, thanks for that. Uh, I refuse, I'm not a troublemaker, I refuse to uh, be served by my law enforcement in that manner. If they refuse to serve me after I handed them a case on a silver platter and hand me my dang gun back, then I'll have to buy another one. But I think that's inappropriate, and so on that score, I applaud the Chief of Police for possibly trying to bring a greater level of accountability uh, in a case like this. I would reaffirm that if we had no idea where the firearm was, we had no idea who took it, and they had to try to trace fingerprints and stuff that it could get shoveled aside because it's such a small case and didn't involve tons of money or nothing. And I would understand that perfectly. On the other side of the coin, when you tell them where the gun is, and they did get the gun, and, and they knew, and they checked that out, uh, and then all they got to do is basically brush it aside because maybe the people they thought they were dealing with weren't worthy of justice. Well, I'm here to tell you that we deliver justice to all these lower income, socioeconomically challenged people every day when we throw them in jail, when we throw them in prison, we give them all the justice they want and then some. But maybe when we have a need that goes the other way, 
then it's convenient. So I am asking uh, Mayor Greer if it was your gun and your son had it stolen from him, would they have dared to brush it under the rug and ignore you for 60, 90 days? I hope not. Um, any, uh, thank you so much and uh, do your best with this. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for your comments. And to answer your question, I would hope that uh, if you got blown on for 90 days, I would hope I'd get the same treatment. Well, my name is Jerry Janarski, and I live in 2695 Central. And I was wondering, I asked myself how, because in, when I was a young man, I ran a machine shop. I went to school, and I learned how to do all that work, and I was an expert at it, because of everything I learned. And here is a guy, here comes a policeman, he studies, he has to know his job. And I'm wondering how the intern here, does he have police training? Does he understand what's happening? Does the mayor have police training to understand to do everything right? You are not giving this man a chance by not having the education. You do what you want, it's like the old voice. Oh, because he ain't even good, I'll do what I want. And this is what's happening that we see or I see. I'm wondering how you're, you're doing this. Who has the training to make decisions? Where's the money at? I'm not sure I understand your question. Who, whose education are you acquiring about? I'm educating you. What education do you have for the police force? I have no education whatsoever, but I'm not acting on the police force. Well, how about the guy yeah. next to you? This guy right here, he's yeah. the administrator, he's got administrative training. However, the, the person that conducted the audit was a retired police chief, as I understand, from well, outside. What are the charges now? Everything's hearsay. What's what that? is his charges? I don't think we have any charges. And how can you have this thing going on? It don't there make sense. There's been no adverse action against any police personnel. I'm talking about the chief. Maybe, maybe the administrator would like to redress that, but I don't think there's any adverse action that's been taken. These sorts of allegations need to be looked into. What kind of a what kind of a city would be would we be running if we saw these kinds of allegations and just turned a blind eye to them and didn't investigate them? You're going by hearsay. Well, everything is hearsay until you can prove it. Well, how about me if I go down the street and I talk to somebody and they just do did this? They know you and they don't think you're any good and you're a cheat. Well, am I supposed to think that? That's hearsay. And I've been told that. Well, I would certainly hope that somebody would conduct an investigation to prove or disprove that allegation. Maybe you ought to be investigated then. Investigate me. That's all I got to say because you guys are doing things wrong. Would you like to respond? Well, you know, I, I appreciate all your points, first of all. Microphone. I, I appreciate all your points. Use the microphone. This is going to pick up for TV, but I don't know if it's going to pick up too much for all of you. I'll try to talk as loud as I can. I appreciate all your points. Uh, it, I have spent a number of weeks now trying to go through and make sure that I understood all sides of this picture. As you know, in any story, there are different sides to the story. And it's important that we take, give us the opportunity to go through and make sure that we have the chance to understand all sides of the story. We're in, in the process of trying to investigate that now. Um, we want to make sure that if First of all, we want to make sure, as all of you are suggesting here tonight, that we have a police department that you can be proud of, that they're doing their job, and, and uh, that they can be happy with the place that they're working, uh, and they can be proud of their efforts. It's, it's about all of us getting what we, what we all deserve. But at the same time, um, I think that we want to make sure that with all the things that have been said, we've had several years to try to you know, get the police department into a good position. Uh, we are unfortunately at a place today where there's some, some disarray, if we can call it that, that's going on within the police department, and we have to figure out how to solve this problem. Um, I have not sat back and said, oh, well, I'm going to take everybody's word, let's put the chief on administrative leave. This is about getting the department so that it, it is in sort of a neutral position, keeping everybody in place. All it did was kept the festering going, and we have to stop that. It doesn't necessarily mean that the chief is right or the chief is wrong. It means that we've got to investigate everything that's been said and get to the bottom of it and solve it. And if it means that there are people that are in that department that are part of the problem, they need to be dealt with. If it means that the chief is part of that, that he hasn't provided the guidance, 
That needs to be dealt with. Is anyone else been suspended? We are in the process of going through this investigation to figure well, those things out. Been suspended, though. That's correct, but we are still working on a variety of, of things and investigations, and we will make those decisions as soon as we have all that information. Uh, we, we couldn't have a situation, at least in my estimation, where we were trying to operate a department. We have someone, and I respect the chief. I've had a chance to talk to him and respect him and the things that he has done. I couldn't have a situation where we have a department that's trying to operate. People are you know, trying to get in and figure out what's going on within the department. They're, they're investigating other people. Who said this? Who said that? We need to stop that and allow the neutral third party to come into this, investigate it, figure out what the real story is, and then let's solve it. So that's the approach that we decided to take. I've had the chance to set and probably interview a lot of people before I made that decision. I investigated some of those other police agencies that you've talked about. I know what they have said. I've had a chance to talk to them directly. I've had a chance to talk to other people that have been involved. I've had a chance to talk to citizens. This is not an easy decision by any means, but it's a decision that as a community, we all have to fix. Whatever that fix is, we will figure it out, and it will be for the good of the community. I just don't know today what that is, but we'll get there. I got another question for you. How long have you lived in Canyon? Because you kept saying we and I've seen this. How long have you lived here? I've been here for a year. Oh, a long time. Okay, I understand now. You, you know everything. Thank you. Thank you for coming out, Mr. Bernarski. That's it. Thank you. Um, with that, we'll move on.